Mano vardas stovaldas ir aš labai mėgstu savo darbą. Aš padedu organizacijoms susikurti darbo erdvės, kurios veža juose dirbančių žmonės. Erdvės, kurios yra efektyvios, ergonomiškos ir estetiškos. Erdvės, kuriuose atsiskleidžia organizacijų ir jų darbuotojų potencialas. Savo darbe noriu būti geriausias, todėl į komandą kvečiu lyderius ir kompanija Howard yra lyderis, kai kalbame apie ateities darbo erdvės. Ši globali organizacija vienyje beveik 7 tūkstančius bendraminčių dalis tų žmonių kūrė inovacijas, kurios padeda Havard klientams dirbti efektyviau ir pasiekti geresnių rezultatų, panaudojant mažiau laiko ir kitų resursų. Mūsų šiandienos večias yra vienas iš tų žmonių. Robertas yra architektas, Havard Aviation komandos narys, kodizainer iniciatorius ir vadovas pasaruosius kelis metus. Jau netrukus iš jo lūpų išgirsite apie šią programą, kuri buvo pristatyta prieš dvi savaitės Orgatek parodoje ir sužinosite, kokias naujas galimybės jis sukuria kompanijos Havard partneriams, architektams, verslo pastatų vysitojams, o taip pat organizacijoms, kurios planuoja pokyčius savo darbą atvese. Vėliau aš papasakosiu ir apie kitas inovacijas, kurios gali padėti matyti su iššūkiais kylančiais organizacijoms Lietuvoje. Tai linkiu visiems gerų įspūdžių ir kvečiu kartu su Robertu leistis į inovacijų kelionę. Thank you, Travaitas. Um, yes, good morning, um, and thank you for joining in um, for this presentation, for this uh, kind of lecture. And um, I, th I like this space very much. I have been here about two years before, and um, it's really a um, very great uh, space for doing workshops and uh, presentations. Um, yes, and um, I'm um, envious <laughs> that you have spaces like that in Vilnius. <laughs> So I will talk um, about uh, Co-Designer, um, a software we, are, we have developed over the last um, two years. And um, the initiative uh, to develop uh, that software that supports architects or uh, both architects and clients um, within the design process in early stage phases um, of office design, um, it, it comes out of a very deep, um, yes, um, demand that I felt uh, being um, in several positions within my um, work life, um, in, in various positions on the client side, but also on the planning side. Um, and so um, uh, I think the first ideas uh, already came when I was studying um, um, in 1999, uh, 2000, <laughs> and working for a software company. And um, the software company Nemechek, I was part of the uh, so-called future team of them. They were testing some new approaches for planning software. And uh, that time, one colleague told me, you know, um, the uh, government of Singapore, um, they, they just um, made, an, uh, made an announcement that in a few years, they would like to um, kind of check all the uh, floor plans that are handed in for um, um, getting permission to be built um, fully automatically so that no uh, human being would uh, be needed to check the plans if they meet the requirements for fire standards and all that stuff. I said, this sounds to me very unbelievable. And um, in that time, there were first ideas about BIM building information modeling and um, I thought, wow, maybe there is a kind of chance. And in my thesis uh, for university, when I got, got my degree, I, I was just describing some processes 
um, how things could be done in future. And then um, I did a completely different job um, for many years. Then I was um, at a car manufacturer, BMW, in Munich, being a project leader, a part project leader for a very large uh, project with uh, 65,000 square meters office space and, and studio space. And um, my boss was a, then, that time, a head of design of BMW, uh, Chris Bengel, and he said, you know, um, you are responsible for innovations in that building, so try to do your best um, to do this kind of innovation in any way, in processes, in building equipment, whatever. And I invited uh, some guys, some people from um, University of Zurich, or Technical University of Zurich, um, who were um, that time doing research on parametric office, not office, parametric architecture design and uh, parametric planning for urban um, uh, landscapes and um, yes, um, developing new quarters of town. Um, they were also involved in some of those um, um, islands, um, artificial islands um, um, off the shore of, of Dubai that time. Um, yeah, and I invited them and they told me their ideas, how they could help me with the project because I had to align 400 different rooms um, with 13 decision makers about their positioning of the rooms, about um, what those rooms um, should do <laughs> um, and what they are for and so on. Uh, we, we put that in a kind of room book and um, it to, to align all that parameters uh, was very, very exhausting. I did that all with uh, Excel. And, and those guys said, um, maybe we can find a new way of aligning and uh, making consensus out of um, all those parameters. And um, then I left that job without um, finishing it because the Lehman Brothers crisis came and the building was not built. And um, later on, um, I was on the side of the planner, not on the client side, um, and um, I already uh, was, uh, I was really aware of the complexity of, of space design and office design and I approached those guys from Technical University again and asked them whether it would be possible to continue on those thoughts and uh, finally after 10 years with breaks, with many breaks in between, um, yes I'm very proud to, to present uh, the outcome. Uh, and Hayworth, um, the company I'm working for, um, was um, really um, yeah, happy to, to get this kind of impulse and I was happy that they funded the project and we presented it at Orgatec this year and um, I got um, involved in so many different talks with architects and designers and clients so that I had almost no break from uh, Tuesday morning to Friday um, night <laughs> um, and um, getting feedback of all kind but um, I think you just have to make up your own mind um, when I just present um, the project. So I just call it a digital, digitalize your workplace strategy by digitalizing your design processes and um, um, when I was uh, leading a workplace design team um, some years ago, one of my um, colleagues said to me, collaboration um, is so difficult in early phases because um, many stakeholders do not have a good imagination. And um, so, especially when the many changes come at a certain time, um, uh, new requirements uh, come in and they throw everything over the pile. And that's exactly what I experienced um, in many projects. And um, so um, you might know um, to design a workplace uh, building, a work uh, office building with many workplaces, um, you have all those numerous attributes and parameters that drive complexity. And it starts with the, um, for F FM people, the space efficiency, of course. Uh, but for the users, uh, there are other things much more important like neighborhoods, um, and um, yes, work culture, work styles, 
uh, for the FM people, the desk sharing ratio um, and the clearances are important, all that stuff. And um, how do you get that all together with um, Yes, an um, envision storage concept, acoustic shielding, light, mm -hmm. air conditioning, cabling, all that stuff. And so um, um, you see that uh, if, you, if you just make a first draft um, out, out of that, you would just leave many parameters aside and um, say, okay, we will do that later. So um, <coughs> first design normally uh, brings you to 80% of the results. Um, and then the changes come and the additional parameters come and then you need 80% of the effort to just to finish the rest of the 20% of the planning. So this is called Pareto principle and it's not valid only in office space design but in all kinds of, let's say, uh, development processes. So the idea is how nice would it be to have a decision relevant or ha to have decision relevant key figures available at your fingertips, um, as Bill Gates would say, um, to undermine the Pareto principle. Um, let's say um, things like um, grade of use space, uh, space balances, personal communal space, cost estimates, um, quantities, qualities, uh, certain qualities, um, but also kind of grade of fulfillment of your strategy. Um, so the idea is to skip those 60% by a new process and still to get 100%. Um, so and, and I think we can prove that um, we are on our way to deliver that um, because um, uh, the parametric design um, approach is so different from the current design approach, um, but still it has many um, uh, elements that are exactly the same, but some of the elements have to be um, considered more deeply. So um, some of those um, uh, illustrations are from a client of us um, who um, uh, did exactly what I was doing. <laughs> so I, I thought, why, why not using the client's illustrations uh, instead of mine? Uh, because um, we have the same mindset and um, the client um, um, gave us a 600 page, you can't believe it, 600 page document about his workplace strategy with many, many examples. And when I got that the first time and I just saw 600 pages, I thought this must be crap because nobody needs 600 pages to describe a workplace strategy. And when I found out that um, the key elements of the workplace strategy uh, were described in just a few, few pages. Um, I was really happy because all the rest was just, you know, illustrating how it works in many, many different ways. So um, the 600 page document is really great. <laughs> and, um, and it starts with um, uh, those two parts uh, describing spatial metrics and user metrics. Um, and, and how to align that, how to align the characteristics of the building that hosts the users with um, the demands and the requirements of the people who interact with the building in scope. And I like this idea to describe it like that. Um, and this is also from the customer. And um, he describes his steps of um, how to do workspace um, design um, in early phases and um, it's uh, five steps. We have four steps <laughs> in our company but it's more or less exactly the same. It starts with calculating the population, defining user clusters, confirm strategies, whatever, defining ratios. Um, yeah, sometimes I think that could be done later uh, but um, it, it, they do it like that. But, but the step of defining ratios and um, zones um, is essential. Organizing zones and neighborhoods, analyzing communication relationships, uh, distributing the zones and neighborhoods, um, and uh, presetting uh, the work setting mix. Um, 
work setting mix in accordance with uh, the idea of activity-based working and then defining uh, support spaces. And so um, in my uh, experience um, from the planning teams, I know that whenever you started to do something, you normally you have to go back and restart um, in many projects. So there come changes and changes and changes. And then um, that's uh, what, what's time consuming. Um, so um, calculation of targets is something um, some of our clients have, have ideas how to do that. Some don't have that and ask us. And, um, but, but I liked um, that chart again from our client how he does it and um, yes, it's, um, it's so easy, but you see it's a calculation and uh, calculation um, can be done by a computer very easily and uh, if you do it um, manually, it always takes time. And um, so it's about the assignment, uh, defining number, numbers of um, uh, meeting spaces and, and all that is uh, just, you know, calculation and it, it's boring, more or less. Um, and uh, there's another step. Um, um, uh, this client does exactly as we do it with the software. Um, it's a rule-based um, calculation of um, space usage and space distribution. Um, so. Um, for instance, uh, they just count, for instance, uh, for a certain type of building, uh, 0 0.15 seats per headcount per employee uh, for collaborative rooms. But then there might be um, like other calculation types, like one workshop room per 100 employees. And uh, when it comes to meeting rooms, um, they have. Uh, they distinguish between small meeting rooms and large meeting rooms, and um, uh, they have 80% uh, of um, the meeting rooms are, should be small meeting rooms and only less than 10% uh, large meeting rooms. And all that can be, you know, just um, set as a, as a digital rule as well. And um, so what they like to do at the end um, is uh, that they would like to do all their decisions based on different scenarios. So the idea of this client is uh, whenever uh, they have a new project, um, before the uh, decisions are, are finally done, um, they just um, want to see four different scenarios, a low flexibility scenario, medium flexibility scenario, um, a high flexibility um, scenario, and, and uh, I don't know whether this is the targeted ratio they define somewhere, whatever. But um, f in this case, four different scenarios. And uh, that's exactly how we think that we will uh, drive this idea of scenario planning, which is so hard in um, our time at the moment or currently because it's so time consuming. And um, um, our client also has um, a, d a definition of um, how he understands activity-based working in terms of that those so-called activities are to be defined um, very um, deeply, um, very, very um, precisely by defining and describing the different um, activity spaces in depth. And that's what I think about 100 pages in the 600 page document is to describe every type of space exactly um, with measurements, um, with minimum distances, um, with um, square meters, capacities, um, with um, definition of furniture, and with uh, activities you can do within that kind of spaces. Um, and so, um, um, it's interesting because our process is also similar. Uh, we define activity spaces and we just, uh, we show that later we define minimum and maximum spaces and uh, the software is aligning it with the geometry of the real space and we, um, what they called activities is a tagging system 
in our software, we tag our spaces, what they are intended to do um, in collaboration with the users. Um, so that's just um, a chart showing that key figures for space efficiency and other parameters are defined in such a way, they call it mobility ratio, uh, we call it death sharing ratio, uh, but um, how to count that, how to calculate that, it's, it's very nice. So, um, how do you cross-link and visualize all those uh, key interdependencies? Um, I think um, that um, there are many of them. Um, I was talking about uh, your workplace strategy. I was talking about desk sharing ratios and work culture. And work culture consists of various parameters. They are more or less up to you to define them. And um, yes, um, then interfaces to other software, um, um, work styles, uh, layout styles, um, agile working, um, and, and I would even add agile design processes. So how to make design processes faster. Um, yes, so our idea is um, to put it in a nutshell to switch from space planning to digital organization modeling. And this is completely different because if you, um, if you do not draw a plan, but instead you set up a model, you can do what you like with the model later on. You can change the model and you just need an interface um, to uh, visualize your model in various modes. It can be a visual interpretation of the model, it can be a numeric interpretation of your model, it can be anything and you can change your model and you get different results out of that. Because today CAD is really not computer aided design, it's just documentation and the idea of BIM building information modeling was um, to revolutionize that, um, but, but it only works in some parts and so um, we started to, I would say, to work on our own BIM system in that case. Um, so digital organization <coughs> modeling needs relevant project information and data. So the early, earliest design phase is uh, collect data and information about your project and to document that in a proper way and uh, we call it understanding phase. And therefore you need workshops, you need to talk uh, to your clients, you need to observe, um, and um, you need to find uh, the real objectives of your client. And uh, for that, uh, we use a digital um, survey system. We call that lens survey. And uh, the so-called lens survey is uh, split into three different parts, um, starting with um, culture lens. Um, it's based on a, a framework, a culture framework, which is called Competing Values Framework, which we license from University of Michigan. And um, this culture lens survey tries to find um, out what kind of um, work culture different teams in a company have and um, describes it uh, with um, the attributes uh, that can be attributed to those uh, user groups. Then um, Office Lens um, describes um, the overall, um, I would say, well-being in the office um, due to various parameters and work style lens, um, we get the information about work styles um, our clients or the teams of our clients have. And all that is done um, uh, with a so-called Qualtrics survey system, uh, which is um, a, a current up-to-date uh, survey system which um, is used by, by many organizations and it can be adapted to the needs of the uh, project of the client whatever, and um, normally we would ask um, about 70 different questions to find out <coughs> as much as we can 
about the project, but um, about only 20, 20 questions of those 70 are absolutely linked uh, to workspace design. Um, I will show that later. So this is um, the so-called um, uh, competing values framework. Um, it shows that um, we um, talk about collaborate cultures, create cultures, compete cultures, and control cultures. Um, and, and people um, working in a collaborate environment normally um, need to have a different environment than their opposites um, in compete environments. And, and the same with create and co control. It's um, like really completely opposite also in understanding use of space. The compete people usually do not need so much um, space um, um, and um, especially for, for communicating informally. They are um, not the communicators so much. And, and, and the collaborate people like to talk a lot and, and to align, need more meeting spaces. Uh, the create um, teams usually need different environments, more space. Um, uh, the control uh, people um, are completely happy to have an um, environment which uh, suggests uh, that it's very stable. Uh, so there are many attributes you could um, talk about, but uh, that's not about the system today, but um, that we integrated the system in our software, which makes it really um, interesting. Um, so Office Lens, you get um, that's you know, some of the kind of charts you get out of the surveys. Um, um, green means, OK, um, this is above average. We have a database with about 40,000 um, sets of data, um, uh, which we can use for um, uh, vergleiche, I don't know, <laughs> compare, to compare um, a, a current project um, to, to projects we already did. And um, so if it's red, it means it's below average, it um, could be improved. And uh, work silence, um, it gives you a kind of overview how people work and how many of them you find in which team. So, um, those lens reports, um, um, we, we, we put them into uh, executive summaries normally and then a designer or a workplace strategist or architect starts to work with it. And um, then always the same question arises, what do we do with this data? What does it tell us? Is it telling or is it just describing something and what um, yeah, how to design with this data. And uh, we said, okay, um, let's, let's integrate um, some algorithms in our tool that um, can be, um, that are variable, but uh, that describe the interlink between the data and, and the design more properly. And uh, you will find in the software uh, user interfaces like that where you more or less exactly find uh, the competing values framework, um, but not as a, as a circle with a, a result, but with sliders to slide through and to change cultures from, let's say, control to create. And you can see in real time what happens to the space when you slide the slider. And um, there is, um, this is, um, seamless, you, you know, it's uh, completely variable. It's not like you have either control or create, but you can really slide through. And that makes it very interesting. Um, and um, at the same time, you get <coughs> the key numbers uh, that are relevant for the projects in real time, like um, so um, the, the number of workplaces, uh, square meters, 
um, square meters per workplace, whatever, this is variable. Uh, in the version now, it's, it's not variable yet, but we will make it variable so that you will see exactly the key numbers you need for your project. Um, and um, then, um, ah, okay, I, I left out some slides, but, but I show you that in real time, in real, um, so that you can change uh, the perspective um, how you look on your project. Uh, this is a, um, a view w where you can see the, um, um, the activities from activity-based working. Um, and uh, the, there's a color code. Um, the, the darker, the more private the spaces are, the more light, uh, the more collaborate, the more open public they are. Um, yes, and uh, finally, there's uh, the possibility at the moment, we have an interface to uh, a um, program which is used in our industry um, in Europe a lot, it's called Pecon Planner. And we can import those co-designer layouts into Pecon Planner to get 3D files and to do immediate um, renderings and, um, and visualizations. And um, the really cool thing is that this is an automated generated plan um, but um, I think I have to show the software now. So I was talking, I was talking um, about um, this, those land surveys, and for Ogatech we just. Um, set up um, this process, not with our Qualtrics uh, survey engine, but uh, with a kind of custom version, um, just um, to, to show how it, how it works. And uh, imagine you, um, uh, you would be the client, and um, there um, is an offer uh, for four different building types or floor plans, um, from a real estate agent um, uh, telling you all those four different building um, uh, layouts or building geometries might, um, might be okay, <coughs> might fit at your needs. And um, then I just um, um, choose one of those buildings and then I choose my role. Um, I can decide whether I'm, um, I just would like to um, get the questionnaire um, uh, being um, a team member, a user, or being a team leader, a decision maker within my company, or whether I would be the workplace designer or the facility manager. And uh, when I just choose the team leader here, um, I um, get some questions like uh, adjacencies, uh, what adjacencies from neighboring or potential neighboring departments would matter to me, um, and uh, what about the teamwork styles in my um, in my team? Uh, what about meetings? Um, what types of meetings does my team have uh, during a typical workday? And um, so um, I, I just answer all those questions. Um, and um, in the end, um, when I just uh, use those sliders, uh, go to the next steps, I upload this data, and this is just a simulation of the survey process. And in reality, it wouldn't be just a, a single person, but maybe 600, 1,000 persons um, getting the survey, and then, of course, the next step would be to align the data, but in this case, um, it, it's the simulation that the data is already now aligned. I um, uploaded the data. I switch uh, from this web interface to co-designer. I um, import my floor plan, and uh, which I chose, and I immediately get the results, the first draft of my workspace um, calculated by uh, co-designer software. So this is um, um, just done in a second, more or less. Um, 
and I can choose, um, I have those um, three different departments here and I just make it a bit bigger and I have um, uh, those different views, uh, the activity view, the um, I would say architecture view and also a view for um, light, how light is, um, whether there are dark um, spaces within where um, there shouldn't be workplaces that de need daylight and so on. Um, okay, I, I just um, continue here um, and, and you see here that um, the intention was to get um, um, there was a, um, a, a, a there's an interface where I put in the desired number of workplaces um, and I put in 213 and um, I put it in department by department so the sum was 213 and I can immediately see okay this um, floor plan it um, has a capacity with that parameters here of 247 workplaces and um, we have 3751 square meters um, um, used and so on and all that key data and um, I think what's interesting now here is um, when I just um, continue with this green department here um, I have a, a kind of department view um, uh, where I where you can now see what happens if I slide the, the slider from this kind of control to more create or uh, to more collaborate and um, there are things changing maybe I should also change the, the view a little bit um, and um, it, it's about all those different parameters aligned I can also change um, now uh, working with the same questions as in the questionnaire um, to to change uh, the parameters for meetings, um, for focused activities and so on. And immediately you get those results. Um, and um, of course there will be the question um, uh, about uh, where do you get your applications from and, and your modules and um, you can set up all those modules in a um, extra um, uh, part of the software um, where you have imported your furniture catalog for the project. This is uh, the furniture catalog with all the furniture I have um, ready for use and, um, and uh, this um, where I can scroll through is the catalog of applications the applications, um, they can be tagged, uh, what culture they are used for and um, there could be also <coughs> other tags um, and uh, they um, get a definition what type they are, in this case a lounge and um, whenever I um, would like to create a new application, I can do that immediately. I just uh, define uh, the minimum size, say three on um, three meters, and um, the maximum size may be uh, five to five, six meters. So you see the maximum size with the red dotted line and the minimum size here. And I can just uh, drag and drop um, the furniture I I want to use for the, for this space um, in here. Don't know whether this <laughs> makes sense, but um, just do it like that. Like that. Um, I uh, define what it is, um, mm -hmm. maybe a focus space, and um, I tag it for the. Um, for the culture and then it's um, I just um, give it a name and then it's in and it can be reused for every project. You set up your own catalog of um, or definition of, of applications as you like and from that on you can use them. Okay and uh, depending on uh, whether 
um, you, uh, um, you would like to have the, the view of the department or the individual team view. You get different sliders and different uh, interfaces um, because um, within a department you would set general, um, um, let's say, general work styles or general culture styles for the department, but within the department the different teams might, might need um, <laughs> different or might have different needs um, and to suit the, those needs you, you can deep dive into the team teams and um, adjust uh, the work style data and so on or the demographic data which means headcount etc. Yes and um, if you uh, start working with a larger size building uh, you might find out that normally um, there's one thing called stacking, um, finding the right position of departments within the building. Um, and um, in, in this case, uh, you can do that stacking process manually. Just imagine there would be um, 50 dif different departments um, and those departments um, how do they come uh, to co-designer? Very easy, because normally you uh, have on the client side people who like to work with Excel, <coughs> and uh, you have a structured Excel list, um, and um, the client is, um, we ask the client to fill in the list with all information he can provide regarding the individual teams and departments, um, and if uh, the client already has ideas about work styles or so, he can fill that into the Excel file as well. And then we already have a kind of basis for co-designer. Yes, and um, in also already in this um, stacking um, module here, you can just click and um, make additional um, definitions about desk sharing ratios, um, minimum headcount, um, layout styles, and so on. Um, whether it is a, has a middle zone or should have a middle zone or not, and so on. And tag it as well. Yes, so um, that's um, the stacking module. And then there's also an adjacency um, module where you can define uh, the, adjacent, uh, the, the, the objectives uh, for adjacencies uh, for, um, for teams or for, for departments and you can define uh, the priority of um, the adjacencies as well. And uh, what I don't have here in, in this demo project, we are working with attractors, so not necessarily, uh, it's not necessarily um, only the teams or the departments that um, can have a adjacency, but also teams with infrastructure. Let's say um, there's a certain um, part of the building that has a name, and I would like to have um, certain, certain departments nearby that, so it can be introduced as an attractor, it can be also outside the building. Let's say if there's a, um, a quiet side of the building, I can put an attractor outside. This is the quiet side and I can make adjacencies from teams to the quiet side of the building. That's also possible. Okay, um, and whenever you change anything, um, then still those adjacencies um, try to be fulfilled. Um, and um, so this kind of process of, um, of designing the, the space is um, yeah, extremely fast. You see, I just removed the departments from my floor. Um, um, in, the, in the stacking module, I just removed them and put them back. And um, of course, the software now needs to completely recalculate uh, the floor plan again. So I just do that by pushing the button. And whenever there is a certain status I like, I can make a snapshot and um, there's a new project with that name. Um, I can um, 
further use um, and um, uh, whenever um, I need a data exported uh, to my CAD system or um, use it for an illustration as a PDF, whatever, or just need the, the key numbers, I export an Excel file. So that's more or less what we can do now. And um, yeah, this is version one. It just started and um, we, we are really um, thinking that um, the way of the early phase development of office spaces, of larger office spaces, um, can be revolutionized by, by that kind of system. Yeah, so if you have questions, just feel free to ask. Uh, maybe uh, I have just some final s slides here. Would you like to, to ask questions now? I can switch to the software later again. Okay, um, then just kind of summary here. Um, yeah, it's um, really a new kind of early phase office space design process, um, which makes uh, this kind of collaborative aligning process easier and decision maker making process easier, simpler, faster, more predictable. And um, the idea is to work with scenarios um, and to set up different scenarios with different um, parameters. And um, that uh, the, the best thing is that the client's requirements um, are completely used. So it's not our ideas, but it's, it's depending on, on the input of the interior designers and um, on the client's input that um, makes um, the results. Um, so um, by, by just using this kind of software, uh, uh, there is a, a much better way of communicating decision-making processes and even discuss outcomes of, of such alignment processes in an understandable way. Uh, so a co-designer um, will be an essential part of our ideation um, services offers and um, we, we will offer something like day workshops um, with our clients and with their interior designers or architects. Um, there's um, a little preparation uh, in front needed, like we need to get um, some Excel information or information in Excel. We need a floor plan which we can prepare, but um, the preparation of the floor plans um, is quite easy and simple. It's just done by normal CAD system like AutoCAD, just structuring the, the information on different layers. And uh, um, then also what we did um, was um, accompanying projects from scratch with some pilot, um, uh, in some pilot projects um, in summer that year, uh, where we um, had uh, constant communication, the client and their um, uh, interior designers were uh, working in Paris and we were working in Munich and we had Skype conferences using co-designer as a medium. Um, yeah, stuff like that is um, already on its way and um, there will be different interfaces coming up Next, uh, the blocking and stacking parts uh, will be updated and um, we, we, there are several things we, we would like to improve after the first responses and so on. Uh, but uh, we are very happy that uh, this kind of software is really working um, in very different scales. It works from strategic site development, scenario design and assessment um, uh, to just, you know, single new projects um, and um, um, our idea of future uh, vision is definitely to integrate that into intelligent digital space management, computer-aided facility management systems being used for relocating people in large companies and so on as well, but also combining that with sensor technology so that um, space would be able to communicate um, the way it is used by the users 
back and that co-designer or software like co-designer is able to interpret that and to ad make suggestions um, how to improve the situation and um, for um, some selected um, key, key account clients um, of Hayworth um, we will integrate that in a platform we call Hayworth Digital Service Hub um, so that uh, several of our clients um, have already a um, specific online platform where they can order um, furniture and um, do reclamations and, and all that stuff but also do some parts of the planning processes in future by themselves. <coughs> um, the live presentation was already. <laughs> and um, have you ever heard about VUCA? I don't know if anybody has. Maybe some, if there were students from the um, business school or some, some professors, they might have heard of it or could tell something. It's a, it's a kind of um, um, yeah, um, concept developed by the American forces um, after the Cold War. And uh, they, they tried to define um, volatility, uncertainty, complexity, ambiguity, which the world is consisting of more and more um, into categories and to structure that. And, um, and I, th I think that this kind of concept is, can be also used for client companies. Um, I find that decision makers um, in large scale office processes um, are facing this vol volatility, uncertainty, complexity and ambiguity more and more. And um, co-designer and kind of software like that um, will help to overcome that by um, cross-linking information, by being open, by offering participation, um, by um, um, serving agility in the process and uh, all you need to add is trust in, in this kind of process. Um, so, um, yeah, so this is the way we understand to help our clients to give more, uh, to make um, decisions more safe. Yeah, thank you.